and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hey, Welcome to episode six of the Idea Space podcast. I'm Jen Liddy, your host. And if you're listening today on Publishing Day, then happy Thanksgiving. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina with my family this week. And I've got a little story for you that I hope you can take some time out to listen to because I think it will help you frame some things in your life to help you move toward your goals. For this story to make sense, you need to know three things. One, Diane is a 59-year-old woman who bullies her sister, Laura, every day. Two, their mom, 92, suffers with dementia and serious physical disabilities. And three, Laura is an overgiver. Laura constantly replays the interactions that she has with her sisters over and over in her mind. She told me that Diane demands I'm available to be helping mom at all hours. She takes off whenever she needs to, but if I need a break, she's super mean to me. Now, my friend Laura is not sleeping well, and she worries about her mom all the time, which is natural, right? I mean, that's a lot of worry and anxiety to carry around when you're so concerned about your mom, and then your sister is, you know, the perception is your sister is bullying you, and our bodies take the hit for the work that our brain does, worrying and feeling anxious around that. So Laura is exhausted and she hasn't spent any time with her hobbies in well over six months. She barely sees her husband and her family is in crisis. Mostly what she's upset about is that she just has nothing left to give. She resents that she's feeling resentment toward her sister. She resents that it's building inside of her and she can feel her self-loathing building. She doesn't know how to talk to Diane. She doesn't know how to create the boundaries that she needs. And so it's just building and building and building and it's really causing her pain. So I asked, what would happen if you just told Diane, no, I'm not staying tonight? And Laura wouldn't even consider that as an option. She said, oh no, she'd be so pissed. She is so angry and mean. And so I said, well, what's the worst case scenario for you? And Laura said that she's mean to me and I feel like shit. And I pointed out, but you already feel like shit. You said you feel like a raggedy piece of shit. Yes. Yes. And she's already mean to you, right? Whatever you do, she's mean. Yes. Laura says. So I said, it's already come true. You're literally living your worst case scenario on a daily basis. You can't please Diane no matter what. You feel like shit. And she kind of stopped for a moment. And she's like, oh my God, yes, I feel like shit. And it was at that moment that Laura realized she'd been indulging an old story. One where she had to replay every interaction until it literally hurt her. One where she had to play out an old pattern that's been in place for almost 60 years. Here's what she'd been indulging in, and it hurt her. It hurt her to have resentment toward her sister. It hurt her to believe that it couldn't be any other way. She had a story that she couldn't stand up for herself, and that was hurting her. And she believed these rules that had been established a long time ago. And so I said, it can't get worse than this, right? What's the one thing you can do today to stop feeling like crap, to get some air for yourself? She thought for a few moments and then her face kind of contorted as she realized the weight of all she'd been carrying around. And she said to me, I can say yes to myself. 
I mean, no matter what I do, she's mean and angry anyway. I might as well let her be pissed off and get something for myself. I want you to think about that for a moment, my friend. She's mean and angry anyway. Like, it literally doesn't matter what Laura does. Her sister was going to be mean to her. And there it was. When Laura realized her people-pleasing indulgence was not only failing to please anyone, she also realized that it was slowly killing her. And that was the moment she stopped indulging in this old story, stopped indulging her thoughts about who she had to be in this story, and stopped indulging her behaviors around how she had to act in this story. She literally stopped, flipped the switch, and stopped indulging. Now, why am I telling you this story? Well, people like Laura are a lot of who my clients look like. They give until it sometimes literally hurts. They're called obligers, according to Gretchen Rubin, who's an author and researcher that I love, but I call them overgivers. These are people who love to help others because it fills them up. Now, this might be you because maybe you love to make people feel good. Do you strive to serve? And is all you want to do be able to give more? And if so, you're an overgiver. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. Please don't start judging yourself for it or or think that I'm thinking pejoratively of you. It's just part of your awesomeness. We desperately need you in this world. It makes you who you are. You make the world a better place, I promise you. And it's also something you need to be aware of so that you can protect yourself during certain times, and also so that you can recharge when you need it. You know, you need to recharge so that you can have more to give. But here's why it's important. Overgivers constantly tell me that the worst part of being burned out is that they have nothing left to give. And of course you don't. When you've reached your breaking point, you've got nothing left. But for you, that's the worst part. It's not that you feel like crap. It's that you can't help others in the way that you normally do. When you feel tired and fried and crispy, there's nothing left for anybody else. You are just too wrung out to oblige. And maybe this is where you are. Today I'm recording this and it's Thanksgiving Day. And if you are just too wrung out to oblige, then you are living in your worst case scenario, your own version of a worst case scenario. And there's two things that will help and I want you to do them. I want you to, number one, acknowledge where you are without judgment. It doesn't mean you need to jump in and take action, but you cannot be unkind to yourself. Don't analyze how you got here. Don't beat yourself up. Just see yourself as an overgiver who has tapped out. And then you decide how you can get some air ASAP. And I want you to start small because again, if you try to do too much, you're going to freeze. Just a little. Start small. Say yes to yourself. Take the nap. Turn down the invitation. Don't put the extra dessert out. Don't feel like you have to make another gluten-free pie for that person who's coming. Turn down an invitation. Go for a walk. Take a shower. Whatever it takes for you to get some air ASAP, that is nurturing versus indulgence right there. Merely acknowledging and deciding is where you begin to nurture yourself. That frees up your brain from the self-judgment that is zapping you right now. My clients are almost always obligers or overgivers. They need support to see that they're tapped out and they don't understand why they can't give more. They're used to being superheroes. It hurts them deeply when they can't give more. My job is to help obligers and overgivers see that people take from them because they always say yes. Does this sound like you? You always show up. You are super reliable. You are amazing. Giving is what makes you so awesome with a capital A. But I want you to get back to that awesome because if you're feeling depleted or tired or fried or crispy or burned out, you're not feeling very awesome. And my guess is you can't give to people in the way that makes you feel good. Step one is to acknowledge and decide what will you no longer put up with and don't judge that. 
And then the next thing to get you back to awesome, we're going to have to retrain those who have come to rely on your hell yes, I can help you battle cry. We're going to talk about this on the next podcast episode much, much more deeply. But today, right now, you're just too wrung out to help anyone else. So you have to help yourself. You have to nurture yourself. I want you to put your bunny slippers on and your robe and nurture yourself. It will actually help you help others better. Let me circle back to the story of Laura and her sister. I told you that Laura stopped indulging the old story and the old behaviors. She just flipped the switch when she realized she was already living in her worst case scenario. But you're probably saying, great, how'd she do it? Well, I'll tell you, it wasn't easy. But you're already doing hard things, my friend. You're already living in your worst case scenario, and it doesn't get much harder than that. So can we just agree that you can do hard things? Good. Okay. Let's move on. So if you can do hard things, that means you can do this hard thing, which is to rewrite the story and break the pattern. In other words, flip the switch. Laura had to examine exactly what she would not put up with anymore when her sister bullied her. She had to make a plan before it happened that she could act upon. And when her sister pulled her crap, Laura pulled out her plan and executed it. She experimented, of course, because not everything worked the first time, but she tried a few different things. And every single time it was hard because she was retraining herself from living in the old patterns. And while we're on this topic, I want to explore another way we keep living in old patterns. We keep indulging ourselves and hurting ourselves. Have you ever shared the intricate back and forth of an entire text message with a friend? You know, it's like, he said this, and then I wrote back that, and then he responded with this. Can you believe that? Do you see what he did? No, well, let me explain why this is so terrible. First she said this, and then I said that. I mean, we relive these painful dramas so many times, and I realized something about this practice. It's super bad for our brains. All it does is sear in the perceived wound. We wallow and we ruminate and we think things like, let me make sure I got this right. I'm going to reread what she wrote. Or did I miss something? I'm going to read this again. Or you say it to a friend. What do you think I should have said? What do you think of this whole situation? Revisiting these old wounds, rereading them solves zero problems. It just reinforces the negative emotions. It reinforces the pain and harmful experiences. It's indulgent. If you had a scratch on your favorite table, would you keep running a knife over it to make it better? Of course not. That would just deepen the groove. But this is what we do with our brains. If you like to reread old emails, old messages, old texts, journals, or letters that hurt you, you're not helping yourself. If you like to replay stories and conversations and situations over and over and over, you're not helping yourself. If you want things to be different, like Laura wanted them to be different with her sister, she had to rewrite the story, not retell the story. I have a client who tortured herself rereading old messages. I'd ask her to block the offender, delete the messages, or just simply not respond, but she wouldn't. She would reread. And until she took responsibility for that, and it took pretty much a year, she was very unhappy with many excuses as to why she couldn't make the changes. Now, over time, she tried my suggestions And ultimately, she stopped ruminating and she stopped overanalyzing and her life became much less dramatic. I'm telling you, she got happy by stopping that behavior because she could move forward. And that's what Laura did with her sister. It's not easy, my friend, but we already know you can do hard things and here's why it's worth it. Indulging in these old stories is harmful It's like reopening a wound that doesn't need any more attention. Stop reopening wounds in order to heal them. You can heal. And I promise you it doesn't happen by revisiting harmful conversations or staying in old patterns of thoughts and behavior. If you need support in staying accountable to yourself, that is exactly why people hire a coach. There's two ways that I help people with exactly this. I mean, you've got the podcast and you've got the ton of free resources at my website, but I offer private coaching and group coaching and both are effective because 
as you can see from these stories, sometimes we need help to get us out of our own patterns. If you're curious, go to jenliddy.com and join the community of women in the idea space who are already moving past their stuck and moving into results. Seriously, what would it feel like to change this pattern before your next family gathering? Come back next week where I'm diving into the how of retraining others to help you get your groove back and so you can get back to doing what you love, helping other people. I'd love to support you because I know how incredible it feels to move beyond the stuck and get out of your worst case scenario. See you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.